In this section, we are jumping from uh, situations that deal with matched pairs data, where we have uh, data points, two quantitative data points from the same person or from a single pair of twins that we subtract to get a single difference for each pair uh, or each individual uh, in two situations. And we're shifting into a different type of analysis where we have two separate groups that don't have any particular connection. This would come from either peer random grouping or from blocking, not from match pairs. So let's read this situation and we're going to go through and try to decode what is actually happening here. Uh, and then from there in the next couple of videos we'll look at confidence intervals and hypothesis tests and how we set those up and what they mean. Whenever I read these problems I like to highlight or underline things as I go. If you're reading this problem on a screen you could take a screenshot like I did and put that into Notability uh, or another app that lets you highlight and decode as you go or you could jot down notes about the problem on the side on a, on a notebook instead of highlighting. But either way, whenever you go through these word problems, you don't just want to look at a block of text and start working. You want to break it down and highlight the key pieces and what they mean. So the first thing I am going to do as I read this is look to see if it's an experiment or not. Um, so experiment or observational study, later on that will tell me if I'm dealing with something with cause uh, or just a linkage. So I'm going to read this only with that kind of analysis in my head. A student group decided to compare how well players did using two different strategies of building a card tower. The subjects were first instructed on a specific method they needed to use for the, their tower and told them it was required to use the strategy. So that's, that's an important piece of information. If they're required to do something, it's probably sounding more like an experiment than just observing what they would naturally do. Since the group didn't want players in mixed strategies, they tested two completely separate groups of people. People volunteered to play, so volunteered to play, but randomly assigned to a strategy using a coin flip on the day of the experiment. So when I look at this, I see that uh, people signed up to, uh, they volunteered to do this experiment, it sounds like, building a card tower they were required to use one of two strategies um, and the strategy they got was determined randomly with a coin flip. So what that tells me is that I am dealing with an experiment. One group of people sign up and they are split randomly into two different treatment groups. The other thing I noticed besides the fact that I know that I have an experiment is that I know that I have two separate groups and we'll see what kind of analysis that looks like in a moment. The next thing I'm going to check for is the types of variables that I have in this situation. So I'm looking for an explanatory and a response variable. The two, uh, f the factor that is the determining factor of what happens and then how you measure that. So again, student group decided to compare how well players did using two different strategies of building a tar card tower. So two different strategies is the explanatory variable. The, the strategy being used seems to cause a some kind of effect about building the card tower, which seems to be something to do with the response variable. So let's read for more details. They were first uh, instructed on a specific method they needed to use for their tower, and they told them it was required to use a strategy. Since the group didn't want players to mix strategies, they tested two completely separate groups of people. People volunteered to play and randomly assigned a strategy using a coin flip on the day of the experiment. And then here are the results. Strategy 1 and Strategy 2. Those seem to be the different options for the explanatory variable. And then the building of the card tower it doesn't say in the paragraph how that's being measured. But down here it says seconds required to build the tower. That tells me that the way that they're measuring success here is how long it takes you in seconds to actually make this tower. So that's going to be our response. So our explanatory variable is going to be strategy. And that is categorical. Our uh, response variable that is going to be um, seconds required to build.
and that is going to be quantitative. So now that I know this, I know the type of analysis I'm going to be dealing with when I get to stat key. I'm going to be dealing with one quantitative and one categorical variable that follows across to the confidence interval for a difference in means or a test for a difference in means. The reason that this situation is different than matched pairs is because these individuals here are not the same individual. So that 33 and that 73 do not come from a single pair of twins or the same person twice. They are two totally separate people that just happen to each be listed first in their particular lists of numbers. So there's nothing uh, that has a special connection between these numbers. Therefore, we don't subtract them and treat it like it's a single quantitative variable. So again, that's only for matched pairs. The type of analysis we're doing now is this one quantitative, one categorical, meaning that uh, the types of things we're going to focus on are going to be these two right here. So in the next two videos, we're going to focus on confidence intervals and what it means to find how different two things are, and hypothesis tests where we're going to ask, are these groups different or not?